been talking New York Mets baseball. So let's go Mets. You know, I know we haven't talked about the Mets in a in a hot minute, aka three weeks. I've had people in my mentions, in my comments, saying that the season was over three months ago. Um, but I think the elimination number went down to four tonight on Forch. But the fact that we're halfway through September, almost three quarters of the way through September, we're still in the hunt. And yes, that's a byproduct of there being seven playoff spots <laughs> in each league. But it's just good to know that they still have a very outside small chance. Um, you know, and it's all Marlin, Marlins and Phillies. So we've gone, we've split so far against the Marlins. If they honestly just go on a fucking streak, again, knowing what we know about our bullpen, <laughs> it's just not highly unlikely. But if we win out against the Marlins and Phillies, like, are we talking about a playoff spot? Yeah, maybe. Um, August didn't help things, didn't help our cause. We're 11 and 18 in August, second worst month since June when we went 7 and 19. Uh, when we essentially basically lost the season, and so far in September we're not we're now nine and eight, so we're playing better than five hundred ball in September, and I think a lot of that has been due to Ronnie Mauricio, called up one of the September call ups, and has been uh, hitting the ball, playing decent defense, but just seems like a nice infusion of energy into the lineup into the field. Um, his 117.3 mile per hour double is the hardest hit first career hit since that cast began tracking in 2015. I've never seen a ball hit that hard in my life. On TV, it looked like it was a rocket. So I can only imagine what it looked like trying to field it. Um, he's also the only Mets player with at least 15 hits and five stolen bases in their first 13 career games. So pretty nice. I mean, now, you know, there's talk about how like he's pro they're p playing him a lot at third because then they can show the Padres that he's uh can be a good third baseman so that the Mets can trade for Manny Machado because Manny Machado wants to reunite with Buck Showalter, who's who's thinking about stepping down after this season. It's like, oh shit, okay. Um, interesting. And I, I guess it makes sense because with all these baby Mets up. I don't, you know, running around, <laughs> leaving their toys everywhere. Uh, Buck, and we know Buck's like not fond of young players and rookies. And he's like, I, I don't know if I want to be here for all this young, all these whippersnappers <laughs> biting my ankles. So he, like, it may, I guess it's not that surprising that he would step down for the season. He's like, I just can't handle like these <laughs> youngins. But then you, you so you're going to dangle Machado and bring Machado in? I personally don't want Machado. I don't know. I think uh, it's great that when he played, his best seasons came under Buck, but I don't know. I don't think he, like, he, I think he's, he's more of a Dave Parkman, <laughs> Major League Two, than he is our savior at, at the a hot corner. DJ Stewart's another big reason why September, um, is going better than we had hoped. Uh, he had a slash of 333, batting average 387 on base percentage, 860 OPS, nine home runs over his last 63 plate appearances, and has accumulated almost a full win above replacement in just over two weeks. Yeah, in 41 games with the Mets this season, six doubles, 11 ding-dongs, 24 RBIs. So, yeah. I, I got to see what his contract situation is because it seems like a no-brainer to bring him back. And, and if not platoon him, then it's like you're a guaranteed fourth outfielder. Um, he goes into year one of arbitration in 2024. But I think he's he's worth investing in for sure, in my opinion. Um, well, my only concern is that is he playing this well because he is starting every day, right? It happens with a lot of players. It's like they, they, they don't, you know, when you expect them to come in and pinch hit or, you know, uh, come in for defense in the eighth or ninth, you know, two weeks in a row, and then finally he gets to start or whatever. I don't know. How does he respond to that? 
Like, would you be confident rolling into 2024 with him as your starting right fielder? I don't know. It, it's, he's certainly making his case for it, and I, I don't think a lot of people would be that upset if he is our day one starting right fielder. You just know that you need to get, like, you can't rely on Marte, I don't think. Hard to see what Marte's status is going to be when he do, when he is fully healthy and comes back. Like, what what is his, I guess, I don't know. I don't think he, I think he's, he's not going to play at the level that he played in 2022. So got to come up with some uh, backup plans. Uh, DJ has the highest weighted runs created plus WRC plus since August 1st. And he's in some pretty interesting company. Mookie Betts, Julio Rodriguez, Marcelo Zuna, boo, Bryce Harper, boo, and then DJ Stewart. Jeff McNeil became the 18th different Mets hitter to record 200 plus multi hit games in franchise history. So the offense feels like it has uh, awakened for the most part and is giving us more of an effort. Um, there are definitely still nights where they, they just take off and they can, they get completely shut down. Um, but it is, I mean, it's so fun to watch them when they're all heating up at the same time. We just feel unbeatable and then our bullpen blows it. But, <laughs> uh glad to see that McNeil is is back in the swing of things. Um had a huge home run against the Marlins in the first game of this current set. And he just he just seems to find he's getting late inning clutch hits. Like even tonight in the in the loss, the walk off loss. You know, it's like he just little just sticks his bat out there, boop, pokes it over the infield, a little blue pit. Seems to be like his signature. Um, he almost had another home run tonight. Um, and then Lindor. I mean, I, I, I know. Yeah, he's got a lot of haters, but at the same time, he's just he's just a solid dude. <laughs> uh, here's a list of players who recorded the following under the age of thirty. So, two hundred and fifty plus doubles, twenty five plus triples, two hundred plus home runs, one hundred fifty plus stolen bases. You got Frank Robinson, Barry Bonds, Ken Griffey Jr., Carlos Beltran, Mike Trout, Mookie Betts, and Francisco Lindor. So, I mean, he's a generational player. I'm glad we got him locked up. And it's only going to be, it's really only going to be stupid fans that drive him out, right? Because it, it feels like, you know, he has a good relationship with Buck. He has a good relationship with Steve Cohen. Um, he's seen how the fans can react when they when we win he's he's seen how we react when we lose <laughs> so uh i really hope he he does finish out his career with the mets so that was uh you know pretty heady company there's 10 players that recorded pretty much those uh similar numbers 250 doubles 200 plus home runs and 150 plus stolen bases in their first nine big league seasons barry bonds jeff bagwell david wright mike trout Francisco Lindor. He's he's just very quiet, under the radar. Like, you know, obviously not getting the kind of uh national spotlight now that we've been pretty much uh, everyone's counted us out of the playoff race. Um, you know, didn't make the all-star game somehow again, which is preposterous. But yet he ranks among he here are his rankings among National League shortstops this year. He's first in Foire. First in home runs, first in RBIs, first in hard hit percentage, first in exit velo, tied for second in stolen bases, second in OPS, second in runs created, third in doubles. He became just the fifth hitter in Mets history to record at least 25 doubles and 25 home runs and 25 stolen bases in the same season. Straw, Daryl Strawberry, Hojo, Howard Johnson, D Dubs, David Wright, Carlos Beltran. So, uh, and there are three shortstops in Major League Baseball history who have had multiple seasons of 25 doubles, 25 home runs, and 25 stolen bases. Lindor, Hanley Ramirez, and Jimmy Rollins. So I, you know, I know we put a lot of blame on his shoulders during that, uh, in, what was it, March, April, May, May and June. We said, look at his batting average, it's so low, blah, blah. But I don't know. I don't think Lindor's the problem. I don't think Alonzo's the problem. I mean, his his power production per year, everyone's saying he's he had an uh, off year. He went through with the worst slump of his career this year. 
at the worst possible time. No one's arguing that. But he's also bounced back pretty well. He came back too early from the wrist thing when he got hit by the pitch. He came back way too early, and he struggled for the next month when he should probably just try to get right physically and mentally and not rush back. But he felt the need to rush back because we put ourselves in such a fucking hole losing so many games early on. Um, but steady power production every year. Northern Met has hit uh, 40 or more home runs more than once. These are the players with at least three seasons of at least 40 homers within their first five seasons. Kiner, Ralph Kiner, Eddie Matthews, Albert Pujols, and Ryan Howard, along with Alonzo. Those are some pretty decent names, dude. Kodai Senga's ranks among National League starting pitchers. Yeah, so, I mean, with with, with Pete, uh, also clutch home runs. I mean, there was a huge uh, three-run homer against the Reds that tied it up. And... You know, it just seems like when we need a big home run, he's not more times than not, but he more frequently, frequently, more frequently than most, I would say. So I, I don't want us to trade him. He's just a good dude. And, you know, I how goofy could he really be? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, just embrace the goof. It's not that hard. Embrace it. But uh, the point is, like, the offense can be can be headache inducing, but it seems like Mauricio's a legitimate option. Neil's kind of inconsistent year in and year out, but he's gonna be there in the lineup. Lonzo, Lindor, Nimo, Alvarez, if he can get some more consistency. It feels like you have PJ Stewart, possibly you have most of your field set. For success, you mix in a little Vientos, you mix in a little Brett Beatty. Vogelback is like, whatever. I don't, th- uh, you know, he's not, I don't think anyone thinks he's part of the future, but it's, we're, it doesn't, we're not that far off in terms of f- f- position players in our lineup. I don't think we're that far off. One or two players, maybe three. Doesn't feel that far off. Now, the bullpen and the starting pitching is a whole nother story. I mean, we are getting some, I mean, cons- all things considered, we're getting much better starts out of Tyler, Tyler McGill and David Pet- Peterson than we did in the first half, or even like the, the in the first, like it's just this past month or so where they've kind of stepped it up and given us much better performances and outings. Joey Lucchesi is holding his own. Uh, Joey But But Buto, Butto, he's pitching like out of his mind. Was it Quintana stepping up and giving us some much needed, uh, you know, quality starts? So they've gone above and beyond. And they've far exceeded uh, the starting rotation has far exceeded what we expected. I think that's safe to say. It's our bullpen is just atrocious, <laughs> just so bad. I mean, at no point, it's any time. It, it's almost like no matter who we put out on that on that mound, it's just you know they're going to give up runs and possibly blow the lead. Um, but there's some bright spots with the starting rotation. And maybe it's a case of like, okay, we'll bolster the starting rotation and we can now use a lot of those guys, hopefully use those guys in the bullpen. I don't know. Not everyone that's a good starter is a good bullpen. Not everyone is a good bah, 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 bah. Some can't transition like me. <sighs> that's right. You hear me. I'm transitioning. Uh, Kodai Senga, I disagree with him winning rookie of the year or whatever. Just, uh, I just, it's just, it's, you know, it's like Sam Hartman at Notre Dame is 24 as a college quarterback. Like, dude, if you could tell me at 24, I'd be a starting quarterback. I, I could play D one and win the Heisman. <laughs> it's just like, I don't agree with like Brandon Whedon, like winning the Heisman or being in consideration for the Heisman. Or, uh, oh my God, the other dude who played for Florida State, Chris Wanky, who was like 28 when he won the Heisman. Get the hell out of here, dude. There's got to be an age limit on winning the Heisman, just like there has to be an age limit with the Rookie of the Year. There just has to be. Now, how does Kodai Senga rank among NL pitchers now that I've rained on his parade? Didn't mean to do that. He's third in ERA, third in home runs per nine innings, or home runs allowed per nine innings, fourth in strikeout percentage, tied for fourth in average, tied for fourth in WPA, which I forget what the hell that means. Fifth in war, in tied for sixth in four. So 
he's definitely in the conversation for Cy Young, right? Possibly. Um, so it's it's uh, yeah, he he's our number one right now, and uh, I think I'm fine with him being our number one moving into next year, which is comforting. It's like, all right, we don't have to go for a number one next year in the off season. Let's just try and get like, and even a two. Let's just get like three solid threes and have them, you know. They're interchangeable in terms of third, third, fourth, and fifth. Because Quintana, I mean, I, you know, it's tough because Quintana is going to be another year older. You got to think that the injury is going to bite him again. So I would not put a whole lot of faith and investment in Quintana. He's more like a, just an added bonus. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, I don't see him starting 30 games next season. Maybe 15. You know, he's going to be like hopefully the added bonus. Um, but yeah, so. A lot of work to be done with the starting rotation in the bullpen. I don't know that there are a lot of guys in the bullpen that I would bring back. I just don't know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's the Mets. They uh, are close to being eliminated, but stranger things have happened. The fact that they're playing like they are against a lot of these uh, better teams. I mean, you look at, like, since August 30th, who they've played and who they've uh, one against took two or three from the Mariners, the th- who are you know either second or third place, depending on what hour of the day it is. They did split with the Nationals, which sucked. You know, we're seven and six against Washington this season, which is pretty much unacceptable. They're the Nats are in dead last. I don't know that a lot of people expected them to compete this year. So, just to have such a mediocre record against them is kind of you know, one of the one of the reasons um, we are where we are. We lost two or three to th- to the first place Twins, which is a bummer. We just have not done well against any of the Central teams this year, <laughs> AL or NL. Some about that Midwest flavor that gives us uh, stomach pangs. We took three or four from the second place Diamondbacks, and we're six and one against Arizona this season. So we definitely have their number. And then we lost two or three of the second. Uh, well depending on the day, it could be second or third place, Cincinnati Reds. Two and four against the Reds this year. So, you know, it's it's not taking advantage of the Nationals. It's not taking advantage of poor, bad teams. Like I mentioned before, 0-3 against the Tigers. The last place, they were the last place Tigers at the time. I think they actually have moved up to the third in AL Central despite the losing record. Two and four against the last place, last place Rockies. 0-3 against the last place Royals. It's 10 losses. Now, maybe you don't win all those games, but goddamn, if you took seven or eight of those 10, <laughs> we would be in the playoffs. And this is back, you know, the Royals, the Royals, I mean, you can say what you will. The, the Royals caught us at like the worst possible time because it was like immediately following the all the moves at the trade deadline. So I guess the team was in shock that we were selling. And so, uh, you know. It was a timing thing with the Royals, but like the fact that we could not take the series from the Rockies is was bogus, and then getting swept by the Tigers, and that's back when we had all our dudes, all our guys. So that's where the season went off the rails. You know, we talked about Jose but- Butto, 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 over his last three starts, seventeen in the third innings, twelve hits, four earned, five walks, nineteen strikeouts, and a year or two so you know i i'm not as worried i don't think i'm as worried about the starting rotation as the bullpen is definitely a more concerning more alarming by sh- for sure i don't even know how to address the, the bullpen at this point i mean i don't know how you go about doing that but um it certainly looks good from a field position standpoint a position player standpoint offensively i think mauricio uh, this is not like a flash in the pan type thing. I think you know we're seeing what we saw with Brandon Nimmo when he came was a September call up. When we what we saw with Jeff McNeil when he's a September call up. So I think uh, we can. I would. I my expectation is that Ronnie Mauricio is going to be in the opening day roster next year, and he's he's probably going to start whether it's second base or third base. I don't know. Um, you know, I know he's had some, there's been some, (laughs) some doozies with him at the hot corner, but, uh, I think we'll iron that out. Right. Probably. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm not as despondent, you know, for the people saying that we're not going to compete next year. That's just, I mean, that's absurd. You know, did anyone think the Orioles would compete this year? 
And now they're the first, you know, they just clinched a playoff spot and they had a lot of people pulling for them. So it's not far off. We're not that far off. You know, a lot of these games that we're losing, uh, it seems like lately are just, it's a the, the freaking bullpen, dude. They cannot hold, hold to lead. Um, it just seems like we just they consistently get themselves in jams and it's and it always snowballs like wild pitch hit batsman, um, just little things that like clean it up, dude, clean it up. So I, you know, we're I know it would be a, a miracle if they made the playoffs this year. I don't think it's it's obviously not not gonna happen, but man, would it be cool? Because like it, if all of a sudden everyone starts to hit their stride all at the same time and and just like that's. That's what we've been ta- that's what we talked about last year. The Phillies got friggin' red hot towards the end of the season and carried that into the playoffs and just took off. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I forget what the playoff odds are, but I would imagine we're at like 0.1%. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah. Playoff odds. So as of was it? This is before tonight's game. We have a 0.1% chance. Of making the postseason, <laughs> yeah, it looks like you know they have their prediction for us over the remaining twelve games is uh, five and seven, six and six, five and seven, six and six. So the best they think that that this is baseball reference. The best thing they think that we can do with ninety percent confidence is seventy eight and eighty four. Woof. It's crazy to think that the, we're, we like very easily could have been a 90 win team and people would have been disappointed, but we'd be in the playoffs. You know, that's all we wanted. Playoffs, baby. Yeah, it sucks. William, we were at the end of May, we had a 51.3% chance of making the playoffs. In June, our playoff percentage went from 56%. On June first to one point four percent on June thirtieth. <laughs> it's one of the worst. That's one of the worst months of baseball that I think anyone has ever seen. Oh my god, dude! Our odds actually went up in July, and then it went it went way down in August. So, all right. Well, that's the episode.